Hi, Shelly here. Super excited to start creating in my new art journals that I made and posted a video of last Friday. And I'll have that link below. Here are the stencils I'll be using. If you're interested in them for your own creating, you can click on my pay hip link below. I've got my art, my new art journal <laughs> uh, book that I made that I'm super excited about getting started in. These sheets are about, I think, 15 by 15 and a half by 10 and a half, 10, 10 and a half. Okay, just so you know. I like to work on a bigger surface, so I this is going to be awesome for me, I think. I'm going to start out with some modeling paste. I like to use the Alex Fast Dry. It's Fast Dry Acrylic Latex Cock Plus Silicone. It dries, uh, if you do a, a thin layer, it dries within 20 minutes and you can start painting. A lot of times I do it a lot thicker and let it dry for several hours or overnight. If I learned this from Lindsay the Frugal Crafter. I'm grateful to her, I've been using it for years. Anyways, love this stuff. So I put it in an old candle jar. All right, so now I'm just gonna take a little bit of my paste, see how nice and smooth and yummy it is. And I'm just gonna go through on my journal page and start adding some spots. I'm not putting a full amount. I want it to kind of look like randomly selected, and it is. And whenever I use modeling paste, I like to have a couple of paper towels off to the side to wipe it off. But because this is the background and I really do not care, I'm just going to keep going. There'll be a little bit of smooshing and a little bit of smashing, but I, I just, it's not going to matter because this is just in the background. And then I just, I like to smoosh it off in between. If I had a lot on there, I'd scrape it off first. And then I would put it in between my paper towels and rub it off a little bit. And then I will set this aside. And in a little while, when I take a break, I will, oh, I will go and run this under some water with a scrub brush very carefully because I do not want to ruin my stencil because I can use this for a long time, but it is best to uh, try to ruin. I don't, I'm not going to worry about getting it perfectly clean. I'm going to take off all the big stuff. And if there's a little bit of white residue on here, I don't care. I'll use it over and over again, but you do want to get the big globby stuff off. They say it ruins your stencils. Eh, if you leave it big and globby, it does, but a little bit of white residue is just fine, in my opinion. By the way, it's water cleanup, so I'll wipe all this down and get everything I can off of it that goes into the garbage uh, that I didn't put back in my candle holder, and then I will just rinse this with water. While that's drying over on another table, I'm going to start cutting out my houses and my sun and my trees. And it's just super simple process, as you might imagine. I'm just going to, and I might just cut out two suns because I still don't know which one I want to use. So I'm just going to use my stencils on the back and trace my shapes out and then cut them out. So instead of you painstakingly watching me do that, I'm going to speed this all up and help it go a little bit, make it everything go a little bit faster. My background is not 100% dry yet, but I'm going to go ahead and paint it anyway. Um, it's on its way. And what I like about, another thing I like about this what I call modeling paste is if you have any spots that are as it's drying that you don't like because it's sticking up a little bit too high 
you can go in and just clean those up a little bit. You can smush it with your fingers, you can sand it, um, you know, you can just rub off spots that are too high, you can smush them down. You've still got a little play time on here and I absolutely love that. So I'm gonna just use my chip brush to kind of make sure those spots are all out of the way. Is that? Mm. And then I'm going to use a little bit of my off-white, a little bit of my parchment. and a little bit of khaki. I just want a nice neutral background on the lighter side. And I'm gonna get a little bit of my off-white, work that in with the two. And I kinda like to tap I am a no brush stroke gal most of the time. Okay, now I'm gonna set this over off to the side to dry. I love painting on a near, on or near a Mod Podge surface because you have a little bit of time to wipe it up if, if, it, if something goes wrong. All right, now most of my papers have some really nice detail on them. But a couple of these, a few of these, are just a little bland. So what I'm going to do, I think, is do a little stenciling. And I pulled out this stencil that has some just different single, um, well, this one isn't single, but Anyway, they just have some simple designs on them and I'm going to do a little stenciling on some of these that need a little something. What I like to use for a dauber is just a clothespin and a makeup sponge without, you know, you gotta get a makeup sponge, the kind uh, that don't have any oils or anything in them. And these work great. And then when I'm done, I can just cut off the end of it that's got the paint on it, slide everything down to about a half inch, and I'm ready to go with another. So you can get a couple of uses out of each one. And I love that as well. I'm gonna put out a little bit of uh, burnt umber here and start with my houses first. And Then I like to get a little paint on there and work it in off to the side of my palette. So I don't go in with too much. I can always put more on, but boy, it's sure hard to take it off. <laughs> Unless you have Mod Podge underneath. Yes. That's a little bit darker than I was hoping for, but we'll We'll make that work. bit lighter handed. On that first one. That's all right. It's just an art journal page. All right, 
So there's my first one. <laughs> These stick to the plastic, so. Ugh. All right. A little lighter hand, let's see. Definitely these two. And I'm gonna, gonna cut off this paint. Slide this down. green for what I'm doing here. I think we're gonna gonna add a little bit of dark gray into that. My trusty popsicle stick. I just wipe it off and keep using it as you can tell. I don't know why, but I just, yeah, that's better. All right, for this one, I, I don't worry too much if I, I mean, some gel prints I get a little bit, if, if they're really bad, sometimes you can't save them, but most of the time you can save them by doing some stenciling on top or with something. Or you can use stamps that you already have on top. To add some detail. All right, I like that. All right, I'm happy with everybody else, I think. We're gonna call that good. And I don't clean my stencils. Uh, they're just cheap, three mil. To me, if you just let the paint dry on them, then I use them over and over again without any problems. All right, I also want to do a little something on my sons here. I'm not 100% sure what, but I think I want to have a deep gold color. I'm going to start off by just putting some of this golden color on this one. is not the right color. And then after 
after it dries, I can see if it needs something else. See how I feel about it. And this one's just a little bit too bright yellow for me, so I'm going to put some of that darker yellow on it as well. I'm liking this one way better. I didn't think I was gonna like these colors, but sometimes you gotta try it just to, just to see. And then tap that off just a little bit with a baby wipe. And I don't think I'm gonna do anything else to it, but we'll let it dry and then I will decide. Now I'm going to get my brush that is not, I mean, it still has a little bit of the yellow, but I don't really care. And I'm going to get most of the water off of that. Then I'm gonna go in with a little burnt umber and start grunging up my background a little bit. Kind of highlighting my bricks. this word stamp made a long time ago. It's pretty cool how you can design something and find somebody on the internet that'll make it for you. It's pretty cool. And it only cost me 20 bucks. Anyway, um, I've got some stays on black ink and I'm just going to pounce some on and go around and put it in a few spots. I don't want a perfect impression. Thought maybe it'd make it a little bit more interesting in the background. That's where I feel like it's a little harsh or a little contrived. Contrived, is that the word I want? I'm not sure where that came from. I don't use that all the time. <laughs> and then we just have a groovy background, grungy goodness. I like to use these plates from the dollar store to put my paints in until I'm completely done with my project. While that's drying, I think I'm going to go ahead and put my windows and doors on. And I'm gonna gray up a little burnt umber. I want it nice and dark brown. Maybe should have used black, we'll see. I think I will put some black in there. All right, let's see if that's dark enough. How am I going to put these out? I think and then I'm going to put them right, kind of trying to get them in the middle. I'm not worried about being perfect, but I want it to be pretty good. screwing it up. Moved it. I wonder how I can maybe really hold it down with my finger. Let's see if I can get it to go. Slow down my pouncing a little bit. little bit of a smudge there, but nobody will know but me and you. <laughs> I can always cut another one and if I have to, but I hate to do that. Okay, I'm also going to 
kind of wipe this stencil off and dry it a little bit because I'm not worried about the paint transferring this one too much, but I don't want it too wet so that I can flip it over and use it on this side. And I'm in, so it doesn't look exactly the same. And I think what I'm going to do is not put the circle at the top, the little window at the top. These little houses are the hardest, I think, because of course now if I'd left it in the big sheet, in some ways it might be easier, but I think it also would be harder because then I couldn't hold down the paper underneath. I don't know. So now if I hold this down really tight, see if I can make it work. I don't want a big round one here. So I think I'm gonna use my biggest one and do this side. And then slide this over to make it fatter. I'm not cutting them out to be exact anyways. I'm, as you've noticed, I'm sure. I'm ready to start decoupaging. I I like to use a watered down uh, Mod Podge watered down just a little bit. That works best for me. And I want to try to do these carefully so I remember what's in front of what. <laughs> Not that it matters that much, but. This really is a nice surface to work on. I was kind of worried about it, but I do really like it. It gives a little bit more than a hardboard canvas, but it's still pretty cool. And then I like to come in with a couple of baby wipes and wad them up. And then I like to kiss all over just gently to make sure my texture is all the same and even then my, can and my canvas or my <laughs> art journal will dry quicker. 
My art journal page is dry and I am loving it. I'm going to go in with my scissors and just cut my trees off the edge that are hanging over. And now I'm going to get a ruler. And I think I want my bird line right up in here. Well, maybe I should. Just about the time I think I'm fine. Let's do, what, six and a half? Six and a half puts a square on the house. See, now I feel like I'm overthinking it. Let's do seven. Let's do seven. Right there. And seven. And I'm just going to use my Sharpie. Let me put my head in the way to get my things lined up here. Sorry, okay. And then I'm gonna just go along slowly. And put my telephone wire in. I don't need very much paint. And I'm just gonna, gonna, I'm just going to go along and put some some birds uh, it's supposed to be this way the page has a lot of texture and it isn't going to be easy to it perfect and I don't want it to be too heavy and perfect anyway. Cleanup is super easy on top of the Mod Podge to surface. Well, Let's just do that guy again. I think I'm going to leave that out and work with my General's pencil. My, what do you call it? General's scryball. And then I can always come back and add some more birds in as I go, if I wish. I'm just going to go along that line a little bit so it doesn't look so perfect. <laughs> it's not kitty time, Bandit. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs>
I love it. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I've just had a blast creating this page. I love working in my new journal and I'm going to look forward to doing lots more. I hope that I've inspired you uh, to find another way to use your gel prints and that you'll try something like this on canvas or in your art journal. I'm grateful for you spending time with me and uh, I hope you're having a good week and I hope you'll join me in my next video. Bye-bye for now.